you hear the storming? The water crashing on the rocks in the storm, right? This is a lot of your lives. A few days ago, God gave me a word, and he said, bring me your broken pieces. And he said, my hands were pierced for your broken pieces, and my love is ever-present. And then he said, you don't have the right to hold on to those broken pieces. The pieces in your life, in your heart, that have been tattered and torn and ripped apart and shattered. And it's all over. It's like shattered on the floor, like broken glass. He said, I paid a price for every single one of these things that you've gone through that you're going through, and that you're going to go through still. Every battle, every harsh word, every cruel thing done to you, every wrong deed, all of it was already paid for. Does it mean it will stop happening? No. What it means is he will carry you through it, and you will be victorious at the end, and you will be a winner. Because the trials, the testings, the, the attacks, the persecution, as he said, even his disciples, even his apostles paid those prices. He paid it himself. But when he died on the cross, he said, I paid the price to take back that which Satan is trying to steal from you, to take back every broken heartache, to take back every wrong deed that was done to you, that was said over you, the lies that you have been allowing yourself to believe. He said many are literally giving away their joy and their peace to Satan, thinking he has rule over them, thinking he has authority over them. God says, no, you have the authority in you because I gave it to you and I paid the price. So it's not yours to hold on to. Are you feeling depressed, struggling, anxiety, um, weariness? He said, this is not your right to hold on to. You need to come to me now and lay it in my hands. Because I already paid the price. Don't you see, says God, that when you lay it in my hands, I, who am the great I am, can take your broken pieces and mend it and mold it and put it all back together so that you now are whole. You now are restored. You now are totally victorious. You now are courageous. You now can stand on his promises knowing that your trusting in him pays off. Knowing that when you stand on his promises, when you stand on his word, he will make it come to pass for your victory and his glory. He will make things come to pass in his word, by his scriptures, through your faith, through speaking out his promises. It will come to pass for your good and his glory and for the end time purposes now to be laid out in perfection and in his timing and in his way. So there's, there's prayers, God said, some are asking about why are they not being answered? He said they are. Some of you are saying, God, but I've been praying for this for a while. He said, where is your faith? Are you only asking or are you believing? Are you only asking or are you standing there saying, now that I've asked, let me give you glory and praise. Let me thank you already in advance for what is already mine. And you must remember it needs to line up to his will. If it doesn't line up to his will, he said, I will still answer you, but it won't be in the way you want. It won't be in the what you want to hear or what you want to see done in your life. But know this says God, that everything comes to pass in his perfect will for your life. And his love is always present, he said. His love is never ending. His love will carry you through every part of your life, guys. Did you make a mistake today? Did you make a decision that made you feel like, now how can I be worthy in the Lord's eyes? How could I possibly please him? Look what I just did. Yes, God said you can. Because you can come boldly before the throne. I paid the price. 
I shed my blood. I bled out on that cross willingly. I crawled upon that cross for you. So yes, you swore today. You lost your temper today. You did something unbecoming in my, in my sight. You made a decision that was wrong. Maybe you gave into fornication. Maybe you gave into the lust of the flesh. Maybe you did something and you went back to smoking or you went back to drinking and you're like, why am I doing this? God said, because you're not winning the battles because you're leaning on your own understanding. You're leaning on your strength. The Lord said, lean on mine. Lean on the cross because I'm there. I was there. I paid it. Lean on me, on my understanding. Don't try to fix yourself. I paid it so I could fix you. I paid that price so I could freely love you. I paid that price so I could freely receive you unto myself. And I am the only one that will get you through the battles, that will get you through the storms, that will bring you through the trials and the testings, that will bring you to the place that no matter what someone says to you, over you, about you, does to you, I will heal and restore you. I will bring you to a place of victory, says God. Okay? You need to know this. I'm resting right now in the services, so I'm doing this separately. I felt a pulling in my spirit. The Lord said, they need to know this. I need to put this on YouTube. You need to know how loved you really are. And like the Lord said, the biggest battle is in your mind and in your tongue. You need to know whose you are and who you are. You are a daughter and a son of the Most High God. You are his daughter and son. You belong to royalty. The Lord Jesus Christ himself bled out for you. You have been adopted into the vine. So his blood is running through you. He's giving you every weapon of warfare you need. The biggest one you have to conquer is your mind. Listening to the enemy. There's no way God could forgive me for that. That's a lie. I, I can't seem to stop sinning. I can't seem to stop. It's because you're still yet flesh and blood and you're giving into the flesh and you're listening to lies. Lay it down on the altar every day. Every day, guys. Walk up to that altar, wherever your altar is. Is it your computer where you pray? Do you have a prayer room? Do you have a devotional chair? Go sit there and say, Lord, I lay this down today. I lay down these cigarettes. I lay down this alcohol. I lay down my bad temper. I lay down my will. Because, God, it's all about you, and this is what I want more. I want to please you, God. I really do. Please forgive me. And today, I lay this down for you to pick up. Now go to praise and let your faith go to work. This is where your faith is working. Thank you, Lord, for taking this for me. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God, for paying that price so that I now can come boldly before you and let my prayers be known. Thank you, God, for letting your will come to pass above my own. Thank you, God, for changing my heart and giving me the desires of my heart that line up to your will for my life. Thank you, God, for providing food for me and my family. Thank you, God, for providing that job that we need so badly. I know that if I put you first, God, in your word, says, put first the kingdom of God and all the rest shall be added on. So, God, I thank you for that. And I stand on that promise. And I stand on your word that says, all the rest shall be added it on to me that says um, all my needs shall be met according to your riches and glory in heaven God I stand in that speak out his word let him hear it when he hears his own voice he reacts he's hearing his own scripture his own words of faith and you're putting your faith behind it so now he hears himself in you and your faith comes to light and all of a sudden you feel a renewing in your spirit that God is going to answer according to his timing, his will, his way. Okay? This is what you need to know. Our time is running short. But guys, his mercy is new every day, every moment. He'll give you another chance. Let's say you laid it down today and you went back and you're trying your very best and you messed up. Don't you beat yourself up. Get back to the altar and do it again. Because the Lord says, forgive 70 times 7 per day. You can't possibly mess up that much. 
He loves you that much that he's willing to forgive you again and again and again. Why? Because he judges by your heart, not by your actions. Your actions are relaying what's going on in your heart or in your body, in your, in your mind. Let me put that with your emotions, your soul. Okay? But a lot of times it comes from a place of pain. It comes from a place of addiction that came from a place of pain. It can come from uh, anger and hurt that you've been holding on to for years. Okay? He'll start revealing that stuff to you and it'll come forth. But your heart can be in the right place with God, meaning I want to do right. I really want to please him. I want to put him first. I'm struggling. So find out where your battle lies. Is it in your mind demeaning yourself, demeaning the child he died for? Is it believing lies that Satan or others have put on you or spoken over you or said to you? Is it anger and bitterness that deep down lies from hurt, from painful things that happened to you? Maybe rape, maybe, um, you know, you were abandoned, whatever. Those are the things that you come to the altar with and let him start working on you. And pretty soon your heart and your, what you want to do for God starts lining up with your actions. But in your heart, what he looks at is what is the motivation behind this? What are your intentions? Are you truly sorry? Do you really want to quit? Or is it just words? You know, the, the sinful nature, whatever it is you're doing. Do you really want to be my child? Or is this just, you know, uh, words because it's the thing to say? Because that's what he goes by is your intentions, your motivations. What's behind it when you're truly feeling it, when you're truly sorry, when you really do want to do right. That's what he looks at. And so then he comes and says, look, I forgive you. Remember, I already paid that price. So lay it down. I'm going to take it. Don't pick it back up. Now worship and praise me. Bring me glory for what I'm about to do in your life. And he's saying a lot of you need to go sit and have time with him. You haven't done it in a while because you're afraid. You're afraid of what he might think of you. Guys, he already knows the situation. You don't even have to tell him. You need to open up your heart. Tell him the rooms in the back that are closed, that have never been opened. He's, he's saying, oh, let me open them and let him go in there and clean house. And then lay everything down and let him start all new in you. Okay? He's waiting on you right now. Go sit with him. God bless.